Hello everyone, welcome back to another crafting video. Today we're just going to get right into it. I'm working on painting my gauntlets for my Draka cosplay. I'm using a mix of different paints. Some uh, Trapper wanted to help, but he, he, he needs to get out of the way. I don't want him to get painted on. But there he is. Anyways, I'm using a mix of different paints. Some blacks, grays, metallic silvery gray and some metallic blue and then some other blues. I actually was a little bit surprised when I looked closer at Draka's character model. I always assumed her armor was more of a greenish color and then I realized later that is just the lighting of Meldraxxus and her armor isn't actually that color. And I was a little bit torn at first. I wasn't sure if I should do a like color, a paint job that's more closer to how she looks in the game because that's how you normally see her is with the greenish tint um but i decided to go with the more i guess canon color scheme of like the metallic bluish thing and then use some green lighting when i shoot so i got a base done and then i just start splotching paint everywhere and little dabs and blotches and lines and stripes and just adding lots of texture into the paint job here and then a little bit of dry brushing using different types of brushes to add different textures and dimension to all of this definitely took some layering of paints but i think the final product came out very good i'm really happy with it i'm also putting a little bit more texture around the areas of the seams and where things kind of stuck out a little bit to blend that together more then for the bone pieces i used a creamy yellowish white color. I just did that as a base over the whole thing. The bones took a little bit more layers because the base was black so it took a little bit more paint to cover that and get it more opaque. But I just started with the big center piece and then going on to the side pieces getting the first coat of everything done. Trying to be very careful around the edges so I don't get it everywhere, but that's how it's going. First coat of the bone color. And here is everything with the first coat. Um, also, I was folding laundry and watching Hannibal again. <laughs> then the next day, I went out with the other pieces that I hadn't primed yet and started spraying those with Plasti Dip so I could get a nice primed coat on all of them and start painting those next too. I love that it's getting nice out so I could do some crafting outside. It's always so much fun. And with priming these, I did two coats over everything so I could just make sure it was a very nice, even, fully covered coat on everything. Then the body piece and the little bones and teeth pieces, getting those ready to be painted too. And there I am out in the sun, it's nice, my stuff is drying, it felt so good. And since it was so nice out, I decided just to keep painting outside. So here I am, I had actually already put a, another coat on the bone pieces, I just forgot to film it. But I'm adding some layers and dimensions and shading and highlighting into the bones now. I just took a kind of brownish color at the bottoms of things and the seams where things kind of met together to be the shadows and then I used a lighter color to be the highlights. A lot of people think of bones as just being white but they're a lot more yellowy I guess. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain colors but um, bones aren't just stark white so adding more tone into it makes it look a lot more realistic. Then instead of starting with the cream yellowy base for the other pieces I decided to do the the first coat of the bones in white just because it was a little bit more opaque so I covered all these bone pieces with a very messy uh, coat of white paint just to get a better base over everything so then I could paint the colors and dimensions and stuff and have it just take less of the paint I needed for the colors. 
So I'm covering up all the bones, the teeth, and the bone pieces on the armor, the skull, the borders, all of that. Look at that skull. I still love that skull so much. I'm so proud of it. And then the hip pieces and then I moved inside while those were drying to start re-sculpting the spikes for the shoulder pieces. And this time instead of sculpting them directly onto the piece, I sculpted them and then glued them on later. And then I switched over to the other skull. I, I decided I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, so I'm sculpting that up more and just making it bigger. Using a little bit of water to blend the foam clay together. At this point I was a little bit worried that all the foam clay on the side would make it really heavy and hard to wear, but it actually turned out really good. I think on its own it's kind of heavy, but when it's all balanced out and attached correctly it doesn't feel heavy at all. Then I'm using a hair dryer because I don't have a heat gun, but I'm using a hair dryer to um, just shape the hip pieces a little more and then putting some tape to hold them in place because I didn't want to just sit there holding it. The next day I went back outside. It's a little bit colder, but um, went outside and I was attaching these belt loops onto the belt pieces for the center and for the hip pieces. I was very brave using this glue with gloves on, but luckily I didn't get anything on my gloves, so that's good. Then I'm also gluing a zipper on the back side of the chest armor. And I applied the glue to the armor itself and to the zipper, and then just use some tape to hold that in place. Then I went back onto some more painting and doing the first coat onto the neck armor. I started this time, instead of doing a clean coat, I started with just splotchy lines and just purposely messy stuff. And just, I wanted to just build things up. And you can see me mixing different tones and different shades with those same couple colors. And I'll just blend it together very nicely. Then some lines and scratches for some texture and weathering and... Chopper, why are you screaming? I also used some lighter shades of blue to add a little bit more dimension. And then some black. And then I did the same process on the hip pieces. Blotching, smudging, lines, spots just texturizing and coloring all of the pieces. For these side pieces, besides just generally coloring them and weathering them, I also wanted to make sure there was dimension for the lines and texture that are on the sides, um, where those kind of deeper lines are, so I put some highlights and shadows on those specifically. Then I did a coating of a sort of tan color over the bones so I could start getting those to the color that I wanted them to be. And look at that, it's already starting to look together. And same coating over the bone pieces and the teeth pieces too, so I can start putting the colors in. I felt like this was a good middle tone because I have a color I'm using for highlight and for the shadow. So having something more in between for the base of color on all of these, I felt like was better. 
then, oops, I kind of skipped ahead, but I did that base the same way I did on the other pieces on the chest armor. And now here I am doing the second coating over all of that. A lot of this was like building things up and breaking things back down. So like here I am putting shadows under things. Just building up color, building up texture until I had it exactly how I wanted it to look. Draka's armor, I definitely didn't want it looking clean looking. I didn't want it looking pristine or nice and put together. It's like she's the undead orc warrior of the underworld, so she's going to be kind of gross and messy. So that was definitely part of the goal with this. Now on to the next day. I'm starting with highlights on my bone pieces and teeth. Just highlighting the ends and then putting shadows into the deeper parts after. Then I started putting highlights into some of the other bone plating, bone, bone border thing. I wanted the highlights on kind of the raised parts and the parts that I wanted sticking out to. Then for shadows, I went into the seam lines and blended that out. And then again, repeating the same process for the hip pieces, the raised pieces having highlights and the sunken in pieces having shading. Here goes the shading into the sunken in pieces of the hips. And then shading onto the bone pieces too. And again with the teeth and bones, I didn't want them looking like perfect little picturesque bones. I wanted them looking lumpy and bent and then because I'm impatient, I had to try everything on. It was nowhere close to done, but I was so excited because it was like, oh wow, this is coming together. This is like looking how it should. Now, day 13 of crafting, I put a belt onto the belt, I guess, on the hip pieces. And then I started painting the colors for the center piece of the main belt, the belt buckle, the skull piece. I'm having a hard time explaining things today. Now here you can't exactly see what I'm doing, but I'm doing shading and highlights on the skull. It's just I couldn't find a good way to place my camera and have it be able to see things and also not block the light while I was working. But I'm using just those same colors and there you go, seeing some of that. The shading into the eyes, the nose, the teeth, just where shadows would naturally fall on a face or on a skull. And here is that. Ah, oh, I love it so much. And here I've done another coat on the hip pieces um, of the armor. And the skull has its highlights and its shading. Chopper's asleep. So cute. I did another coat on the chest armor too, smoothing things out. That was kind of my process with a lot of this is I'm making a bunch of texture, like lots of dots and lines. Um, the pieces I'm working on right now are the shoulder pieces, the kind of under layers, and then these are the scales that go onto the belt, the center part of the belt. But my process with this was adding lots of texture. And then once all the texture is there, putting a wash over it all, 
that is a dark I mixed the metallic blue and some black and putting that as a wash over the whole thing to blend it together more um, and I did that for all of the armor pieces then one of these has some bone again so repeating the bone sh sh shading thing then I used some fake leather to create the straps for the bones and teeth and I'm just using hot glue to attach that I realized as I was doing this hot glue was probably not the best for this because I could feel it squishing a little bit, but it was fine. Then here is the wig for my Draka cosplay. This is actually a really nice wig. I was kind of surprised. I just got this on Amazon. Here I am going at that with some scissors and trimming it. Draka has some short choppy pieces in the front and then a bunch of layers. Her hair's really messy, so a lot of the cutting on this was just trimming things, thinning the hair out, adding layers, um, and then I tried it on with some ears to see if it, everything fit how I wanted it to and adjust some more things. I wanted it a little bit shorter in the front. And there it is with the ears. And then, again being impatient, I just had to try it all on again. and. I'm so happy. It's like it's coming together. And then I realized I forgot my teeth. So I put my teeth in and yeah, I, I'm not quite Draka yet, but I'm definitely an orc. Definitely an orc warrior. It feels really, really cool. I'm so happy with it already. Um, it's kind of hard to emote or express with the teeth in because they're just big, but really all the next thing I have to do is really focusing on the shoulder pieces but yeah here I am I'm so happy I'm so excited I can't wait to have it all finished just trying it on because I like to see it myself but also showing it off to you guys what I've got so far I felt so powerful so that was all for this. I'll see you next time if you would like to see more crafting. The next video will be the final part of my Draka build. Can't wait to show it to you guys.